The Jackson Hole party is over, and here are my notes from Pal's speech today. And look at the dollar's reaction behind me. Green, girthy candles to the upside, a lot of volatility. So here's what's said. 2% is the target and will remain the target. He did not mention Alan Greenspan. He did not mention Paul Volcker, point for the Bulls. Uh, he did not mention loosening prematurely. Uh, he didn't talk about unemployment, really. Uh, he said they're going to be very data dependent and very, uh, it, it was more of a neutral pal, this Jackson Hole party. You know, uh, all the uh, lizard people get together in Jackson Hole and what do they do? Well, pal gives a speech. And before last year, he said, look, we're not even restrictive yet. We're going to spank the market today a little bit more neutral of a tone. Um, and he did say, look, we're getting to the point where things could break and emphasize the word could a few times. And basically at the end of the day, he said, we have no idea what we're doing. And uh, there was this quote out of the speech, actually. He basically said, we're trying to navigate uh, under the stars, but it's cloudy out here. We don't know where we're going. And uh, additional evidence on further progress in growth could warrant further tightening. He said that and only matters if it affects, affects inflation. So essentially GDP is still going up, uh, unemployment is, or, or the job market's still hot. So we're still growing, people are still spending a ton of money. And he said, look, that's fine as long as, as long as it doesn't affect inflation. So uh, demand above trend may be acceptable as long as inflation doesn't unacre prepare, uh, you know, if it does unacre, Prepare that they'll raise rates further. Now let's jump into the charts and see how uh, this affected Bitcoin's price action, where our targets are. We'll take a look at Ethereum and I'll even check in on NASDAQ and gold. Yes, welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from a lovely little Westlake village. I hope you enjoyed the intro there. Anyways, I uh, wanted to give you some Bitcoin targets and take a look at best case scenario right here. You can see this is the bull wick at 28.7 back above there. Very likely going to be good for Bitcoin. Um, what happened in the news? You know, uh, Jerome Powell said 2% and is the target and they could go. They could hike further, essentially, depending upon the data. Saw some volatility in the shorter term time frames. The dollar had a nice pump to the upside. Let's check in on that really quick. And on the 15 minute time frame, you can see um, we had a quick move down, right? That correlated with Bitcoin popping up. Short term, we had a wick up to about 26.3 and then reversed as the dollar came back to the upside. I'm curious to know why you think uh, in the comments below why the dollar went up as Jerome Powell kind of had a uh, a lighter hearted speech, so to speak, um, than last year. Last year, the market sold off pretty good after Jackson Hole. Um, the market, the NASDAQ was down pretty good uh, at one point. Did pop back up here and looks like it does want to officially test this gap. Here's the gap, Phil. Um, we talked about above there, peace and prosperity. Below there, below there. <laughs> death and despair. And this is a bearish engulfing candle we closed yesterday, giving us the bias that, hey, probably going to test the downside and uh, also giving us a bias for, you know, testing some downside on Bitcoin. What are those targets on Bitcoin to the downside? So let me just get a clean chart up here. If I can, I'll start it out on the 15 minute time frame. As clean rejection uh, from the green 55, looking good for downside pressure down to about 25.8. 15 minute range, 26.3 to the upside, 26.3 to the upside and uh, 25.7, does that line up pretty good? Yeah, so I'd put it like this guys, this wick right here and this wick right here and going into the event, as you can see, we just made, well, uh, lower low and lower low, lower high, lower low and another lower high potentially any kind of a closure back below 25.8. But I'd say this is the 15 minute range, a break above there, a clean break with volume. 
you know, going to get you to the next ring uh, on Bitcoin, the next ring, which is about 27,000 to the upside, this wick up here, uh, 27,000 to the upside and uh, 25,1 to the downside, 25,1 to the downside, which would be more in line with tapping uh, the bottom side of the trend line there at about 24,000. So 25,1 um, is, where is 25,1 in comparison? Let's see if that is a little bit more in alignment on the four hour time frame. Where is 25.1 gonna land us? This wick right here, this wick right here. Yeah, so maybe come and tag the stop losses, which are gonna be hanging out right below there. If you're bullish off of this wick, right? If you bought off the four hour higher, not higher low, but lower low, uh, targeting that move, you know, your stop loss is right below there or right below here. So. You know, either way, uh, I think a cascade of events. So point for the bulls here, open interest at 7 billion, right? We got up to 11 or 10 and a half billion. And we had a 20% or a 14%, uh, you know, deleveraging event. Um, and that's what happened in Bitcoin. So with open interest being already low says, hey, you know, for it to swipe another round lower, would have to take us down to the, I believe that was the SBF, March 11, March 23 lows, March 23 lows. Anyways, back on to the regular charts. Let's check out uh, what's going on with gold popping up here slightly as the dollar came down and bounced off our target, filling in the descending triangle. I believe our upside target was about 1930, didn't quite get there and putting in a bit of a bear candle, right? So plays inverse to the dollar. And as long as we are below 1922 on gold, uh, pressure is going to be on to the downside. Yep, this is, you know, potentially, well, potentially caught in a range here, probably going to range. I don't think we're going to move today from this range unless the dollar absolutely starts ripping to the upside by the end of the day. Uh, the dollar, again, kind of giving up bearish bias, this four hour bullish engulfing candle should have gave us a little more upside as long as we were above 103.72 pressures on the upside and we're targeting kind of the next level at 104.71 closing above there, definitely going to give us a, a bit of a bearish bias. So that's it for uh, that one. Uh, Dixie. Dixie on the weekly time frame, also on the monthly, which is going to be closing, uh, well, next week, about a week away from now. You can see uh, the monthly is already, well, if we close below there or above there, right, this is just going to be a massive, um, massive higher low. We just got to close above this middle wick. And yeah, that'll give us a launch up to the green box and pressure on for September for Bitcoin. If something like that does happen this month, good eye to keep a closure and check in on these videos coming in towards the end of the month. Ethereum, <clears throat> let's check out Ethereum. Bearish monthly close. Heard about a lot of people buying up for the liquid staking. I mean, I think a lot of Ethereum is getting snapped off the market right now. Um, hourly says pressure down. Pressure down, uh, if that is not a bit of a bull trap, um, I don't know what is one. Let's see if we came right up to the 618. Oh, what do you know? Bull trap. So people are trapped there and were they gonna get liquidated on Ethereum? Well, let's look at those liquidation levels for Mr. Ethereum. I'm gonna run the report and see where potentially the liquidations are going to come in and where we could get a potential bounce off of Ethereum. If it does want to play out to the upside, target is going to be 1678. And then to the downside, uh, downside is going to be 1611, where the next major liquidity node comes in. I mean, that's uh, $70 million worth of liquidations versus $53 million up there. So for them to push price and then gather all this liquidity, to get the there, I think is the more likely scenario. Could be wrong. And, you know, really, uh, we start just 
closing back above 1650, well then you're going to reach up for this liquidity up here at 1678. And no real major break of the range for Ethereum unless you can get above or below there, which is not a big range. You're talking about, call it 1700 to the upside and 1600 to the downside. 17 and 1600, a close above or below there is going to be getting you a pretty good move for Ethereum. Again, kind of bearishly biased with the idea that um, to buy the rumor, sell the news event, the NVIDIA, the NVIDIA thing. I think everybody knew that, that they were going to beat earnings. So, you know, dump it on the day of the earnings call. And, uh, well, I guess that was buy the rumor, sell the news, sell the news, sir. And that was probably right when they announced earnings or right after something like that. Or maybe it was the day after. Um... Do we want to check in on anything else? So gold holding the range and, you know, if the dollar breaks up, then that's your bias that gold is going to come down. Same thing with silver. If gold starts to go down, silver probably is going to follow yeah. shortly behind there. And um, look, we did come up and tag the trend line. So perfectly, perfectly tagged. And now uh, it's time to come down. What is likely to happen now uh, after you hit resistance? Well, you're going to come back and test the uh, support, support, support. So, yeah, as long as we're below that level in a pretty tight range still. Yeah, until we can get back above 2531 pressures onto the downside, probably going to revisit the bottom side of the range or at least this area right here at 2340. NVIDIA coming down hard still. Uh, let's check out uh, some altcoins. Why not? We're here. We're here. OP down 6% today. This one supposed to be the darling of the market, putting in a lower high on the daily. And I would look for downside continuation. A big, pretty much a big, bigger move down, especially, you know, at least revisiting 143 somewhere in this zone. And if we take out that wick, see you later. Mr. Optimism. Um, synthetics, another big winner at some point in Bitcoin's history. A lot of these guys are coming back for the official test of this trend line, so watch out. Um, Rollbit, looking good, looking healthy, looking girthy. This one just can't stop. Uh, I, do, I do like the narrative behind this one. Probably going to get hurt if Bitcoin does get hurt. But long-term buying opportunities, anything, you know, along the way on this one, I think uh, grab the higher lows. Again, not financial advice, not a financial advisor. Um, let's see, BSV, Litecoin, Litecoin, Litecoin. Let's take a look at Litecoin as a lot of people were hoping this one could save the day. And, uh, you know, anywhere below this guy right here. I believe, uh, you know, we're going to revisit this low here at 54 bucks. So good opportunity on, and, and, and of course, daily back, back above here and, you know, probably going to go to 73. So closer to a bounce than not. Let's look at the weekly on Litecoin. And yeah, it still has more downside to go if it wants to, but uh, that would not be good for the overall market. Don't have a good judgment on that one. Cardano, another one that could absolutely get hurt. You know, if we start to close weeklies anywhere below, back below here, the sellers or the buyers may run out. The buyers may run out. And next target down for Cardano is 19,476. All right, that's it out of me today. Facebook start putting in a double top here alongside NASDAQ, hitting the 786. Um, what did Bank of America just said? They said... <coughs> They said AI is not going to save the tech stocks, not going to save the tech stocks. So that's it for today, guys. Have a great weekend. Have a highly uh, blessed and highly favored day. I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Take care.